Okay, so I bought an MS440 over the weekend. Today's Wednesday. Uh, this came out of Florida. I'm in South Carolina. Uh, you know, we got some origami going on here. Um, I haven't, you can see by the uh, level of origami arts and crafts. Um, let's hope for the best. We'll unbox this and let's see if I can't turn a profit. So let's start with just the simple numbers. I've got, they had it up for buy it now, 250 bucks plus shipping. Shipping was excessive. It was like 80 bucks, but I'm thinking, okay, 280 bucks for an MS 440 in decent shape. You know, it's a paint, it's a, it's a work saw. It, it, there ain't no shelf queen. But by today's standards, cause I think we can all attest that year 2022 will go down in history as man i know what i got <laughs> you know what i'm talking about so i made him an offer of 200 bucks plus the 87 dollars for shipping plus sales tax brought me to just a it was like 302 or something like that 304 so i got 300 bucks in this side and it came with a bar and chain uh <laughs> drum roll please this may take a few minutes to unbox um, you know, I'm, you know, eBay is one of those things, man. You just never know what you're going to get. And I don't, I don't mean to be like Forrest Gump and all. It's just, this just looked like a good survivor. I looked at it pretty hard. It was an impulse box. I give you that. I need another project around here. Like I need a hole in the head, but you know, I mean, it's what I do for a living, so <laughs> that's nice, Clark. Real nice. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, slide this down a little bit. We have a super secure 20 inch bar and chain. That's a steel chain. Bar looks decent. I mean, I've seen worse, I've seen better. And let's see if this thing made it with no packing material at all boy i'm nervous it's a three peckered goat right now uh, you know the bright side with uh with ebay is as a buyer you have all kinds of rights as a seller you have none <laughs> well okay you've got some but it's a lot better to buy on uh ebay than it is to uh sell if something goes sideways so let's just from the pictures i didn't see anything that looked like i was getting a bunch of aftermarket stuff clutch covers ugly but not broken uh chain tensioners factory the jug looks curiously clean let's pull this top end and see OEM air filter. This might. Oh God! <laughs> How the fuck did that happen? Oh mercy! Well, I'm glad I got some bearings just in case. Oof! Oh my good. Here, let's get some more light on this ugliness. <laughs> this thing's ingested more dirt than a Dyson. Uh, now, the description simply said, starts right up, my idols. Here, let me, uh, let me quote this. I'm gonna put you on pause and I'm gonna do a little tiny bit of tear down. I wanna take a look at that jug. We'll take a peek in the muffler and uh, you don't have to sit here and watch me disassemble this thing. All right, I covered the cellar up, um, just cause, but there's my best offer accepted. The freakishly expensive shipping, but like I said, you know, I, when I averaged out and, you know, when you see what 440s are going for, they're pretty desirable. And then here's what I got. All right, so here's good news right there. I got an OEM cylinder. As I took things apart, 
got OEM carburetor, everything. This saw has not been serviced or worked on or anything. When I pulled, you know, the screws, none of the screws showed signs of being touched or molested in any way. You know, when you look at this, you can tell that I was in there or, you know, that somebody's touched that screw. There was a nice coat of dust on there. Um, Loctite was still in good shape on these bottom bolts. Um, here's why this thing was ingesting so much air. You know, when you knock these things out, you start damaging that rubber lip around the outside and that's how this stuff was getting in. Some of this stuff's kind of flaked off. So again, you know, air filters aren't forever. I don't care if it's OEM or not, but uh, let's take a look in here. Nice, beautiful piston, you know, I mean, aside from, you know, I hate that, I do. Um, and you know, people that use touch up paint and stuff, you know, I think I'm just gonna sell this just like it is. Now I'm gonna fire it up and, and double check everything, but all is here. I think everything that's on here is original to the saw. Um, I don't hear, you know, most of that's just the squeakiness of the spring in there, but I pulled it over pretty hard and I don't hear any roaring of the bearings. So, you know, maybe we averted some crisis there. I'll know better when I fire it up. But I'd say that's a victory right there. You know, that's, I've been burned a handful of times, you know, by a seller that just didn't know. I mean, I don't expect everybody to have the understanding of these godforsaken things like I do. And, you know, if it starts up and it'll run, then they'll sell it. And that's fine. Uh, you know, it's just when you get into it. Um, I did pull in the crankshaft. It's nice and tight. There's no play there. So I feel pretty good about just servicing this and then going out and running it and uh, see how it does and see if there's anything that needs to be tidied up. But in the meantime, it's like we got uh, a good place to start. So I'm excited. So uh, sit tight and uh, we'll start uh, doing a little deeper dive on this and getting it fired up and do some wood cutting. All right, got everything degreased. And yeah, I'm gonna hose this stuff off, but you'll see that I've got the intake blocked off and the exhaust spark plugs in there. So I can go to town and not worry about getting anything inside the engine. Um, I think this is going to clean up pretty nice. I mean, for what it is. I mean, we're still missing a bunch of paint on the front, but, you know, it could be worse. Bar's nice and straight, by the way. I did eyeball it. So uh, that's definitely a plus. Bar's ain't getting any cheaper. That's for sure. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Man, I'm telling you, I can't remember the last time that I feel like I did so well on eBay. Um, as far as the paint, it's actually flaking off of here. I think at some point in time, somebody might have tried to clean this with something. I mean, I've never found a degreaser that was strong enough to get the paint all crispy. But, you know, where it's coming off right there, that's not from like wear and tear, beating, and banging. That was some kind of chemical or acid or something that might have got spilled on it. Hell, I don't know. Um... You know, when I was, after I washed everything, I blew it dry and I was, there was flecks of paint. And this paint is like aircraft grade. I mean, it's, it's all in there, doggone it. If you've ever tried to strip apart and repaint it, it's uh, something else. Uh, I did do, while I was in there, a small muffler mod because the factory port was super tiny. Um, gave it... Full inspection, there was a um, chain catcher that had done all it could. Uh, fuel filter was a little cruddy, starter poles got replaced. I took the limiter caps off, uh, put a new carburetor kit in, uh, new fuel filter, uh, did an elasto start rope replacement. You can buy these off the roll at the dealer. So what you get is, here, let me. so it's got the grommet that goes into the top of the handle, 
this second grommet keeps it from coming out of the bottom of the rubber. And then there's just a, you just snip it at the next one, but it's in a big continuous loop of piece and parts. I think those are like four bucks a piece, which is really reasonable. Um, and until the rubber gets so degraded. But anyway, I took it outside and I fired it up. Everything's really good. Uh, another plus from this purchase was, um, it said it had a 20 inch bar on it. And that's a 25 inch bar. It's in decent shape. I mean, it needs to be dressed. Um, the chain, I just put a fresh grind on, so it's nice and sharp. We're gonna do some cutting with it in just a minute. Uh, that air filter had done all it possibly could. I had a spare Arctic filter around here. This is the nylon mesh. So if you're using one of these, you know, just make sure you keep a close eye on it. Um, it will let a little bit of fines through. If you're cutting really dirty wood, dry wood, dusty, um, it's not as good as the standard, you know, paper or the new pleated ones from steel. Uh, but the rest of the saw, man's in great shape. I'm really happy. You know, when I took it apart, all the original gold screws are still in there. You can't buy those. They're all like, you know, silver colored now. But best I can tell, this saw is really just like it left. You know, the carburetor was in nice shape. Somebody's running good gas in there. Um, there wasn't any corrosion in the carburetor. So um, I'm pleasantly surprised. You know, the last saw that I bought off of eBay, it said no returns. And even though it was a part saw, um, it wasn't quite clear that there was a chunk of the piston missing as well as the roof of the cylinder. Anyway, we worked something out. I sent it back. But, uh, you know, his, his photos were a little fuzzy. This, I'd say, redeems my faith in, in eBay. Uh, but you really got to be careful uh, before I get too long-winded with this. You know, it's so easy. See, this is how I like it. I will trade off some faded missing paint. When I start seeing aftermarket parts on a chainsaw, I just naturally assume that there's more than one. And look, if I wanted an aftermarket saw, I'd buy a kit 440 and put it together, you know, with a handful of spares I got down there in that gray box. That's nothing but 440 and 460 parts. If I'm buying a steel, I want a steel. Um, so to find one like this that hasn't been adulterated, <laughs> You know, because once you go down that slippery slope, you know, you start trying to rehab a saw and it needs more of this and more of that, more of this. You might be inclined to purchase aftermarket parts, which are okay. But, you know, like I said, I, I bought an MS-440. I didn't buy a G444. If I wanted one, I would have bought one new from scratch. But anyway, we'll uh, get out to the wood pile. I've got this and a couple other saws to run and do some videos for. I've got an O36 we did some performance work on and a Husqvarna 395. Uh, they got ported as well. So thanks for sticking along and let's go to the woodshed, wood pile. All righty, another classic right here. Here's our 440 from eBay. Like I said, the only thing that's not stock on this or original it's just a few maintenance pieces that I did, and I did open up the muffler just a touch. Made one little test cut just to make sure it's dialed in. And uh, let's go stick this thing in the wood.
to wonder why they put those back into production after they took them out. What a great running little saw, man. Bone stock.